Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Night Football. Welcome to our transfer deadline day review show. And we've got a guest, finally, after a long time. And we've got Sahil back on the show. Sahil, welcome. Yeah, hey, anyway, good to be back. It is. Yeah, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, it's always good to have guests. And it's great to, to actually connect with, uh, con converse with someone for a change. Um, <laughs> not that I don't enjoy conversing with all the people online, but uh, yeah, it's good to have someone here as well. But uh, yeah, and by the way, I did make that mistake on the reel. Um, I did mention that uh, Jorginho joined Chelsea from Arsenal. Of course, that was incorrect. It's because he joined Arsenal from Chelsea. Um, hopefully, most people got that. But yeah, I was really excited. It's, it's the early morning. I had to get into work as well. So yeah, that was uh, there. But nonetheless, um. Speaking of that, done deals. Uh, speaking of Chelsea side, let's start off with the, the, the big one. Enzo Fernandez uh, to Chelsea finally confirm that saga. I mean, what do you think about the signing? 115 million pounds, the record deal now. Um, what do you think of it? Uh, I mean, you can't really doubt the player. The player is top quality. We saw it in the World Cup. Um, he's been performing well in the Champions League. Uh, the price is definitely shocking. Uh, I don't know if it's the current market or what it is, but... Um, Signing a player from Portugal for that much money is, I think, unprecedented because normally you would buy from Portugal for a lower price because they would be okay with 80 million. But I guess they knew Chelsea were there to spend, so they took full advantage. Um, but yeah, uh, good, uh, absolutely a brilliant midfielder, good all around, uh, good at progressing, good at uh, recovering the ball, uh, proven at the highest level, I guess you can say. Uh, yeah, I think uh, he's a direct upgrade on Jorginho probably, who's uh, who's heading out uh, at Chelsea. So. Yeah, good business for Chelsea. Um, I guess they aren't really worried about how much money they're spending. I wouldn't say good business actually, but like good signing for Chelsea. Maybe uh, not the correct Yeah, price. I do think it's good business because when you think about it, David Nunes went for 85 million pounds. So there's no way that Enzo Fernandez is going for anything less than 100. I think Benfica have kind of figured yeah. this out. They're like, yeah, I completely is... forgot. Yeah. Ben Nunes was 85 million. I guess, yeah, especially if you have the tag of a World Cup winner than 120 million. I guess like you found to add like 20, 30 million to the price anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you yeah. know, and we know this. I mean you get a good CDM. That is is these days good CDMs are worth their weight in gold. As I said it yeah. yesterday, Joshua I said as well. You get a good CDM that that's like you know half your midfield that's yeah, that slotted, that's right? True. Um and, yeah. and you don't put a price tag on that. It was just like it's yeah. like how Virgil Van Dyke and Harry Maguire and, and then for years <laughs> now that's what CDMs are. So you've got Enzo Fernandez. So I, I do feel that it's a good deal. So, excuse me for that. I think that's something that I'm also actually looking at um, at other things happening. And so, I, I read somewhere that um, someone said the winner of this deal is Borussia Dortmund because they're going to be swimming in money when Bellingham is sold at some point. Because uh, yeah. Enzo is going for 120. So. <laughs> well, that, that definitely, uh, just give me a second. I'm actually just uh, looking at something. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, just. Uh, Spinning out a uh, post there, but nonetheless, all right. Enzo Fernandez, 150 pounds. Chelsea fans, if you, if you, what do you think of that deal? Let us know in the comments section, of course. So, we'd love to hear from you for your thoughts on that. I do, I, I would give it a solid eight, uh, eight or eight out of ten. Actually, nine out of ten. I'll give it a nine out of ten. Now, the only point, probably, maybe they paid a little bit over, over the odds, but you know what? If he does well, um, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Chelsea have been the stars of the transfer with Diamond. They've got Budre, they've got Malo Gusto, they've got Padiashi, they've got um, Madioki. Are they going to sign anyone this summer? <laughs> I don't know, probably. <laughs> But uh, God, that's just it's incredible, isn't it? Anyway, speaking about wins, you thought you touched upon it. Jorginho, is that a bit of a low for Arsenal? You know, you start off the day, I think you're going to Moises Casado, and by the end, you get uh, Jorginho. I don't want to put a thing down there, but Jorginho, is that a bit of a come down, do you think, or do you think it's it's a, it's, it's a good deal still? No, it, it definitely is an, is an alternative. I don't think they were going for uh, like they weren't planning on Jorginho, uh, but I guess, uh, like for a player like Jorginho, if he plays in a Possession heavy side, which Chelsea weren't really uh, towards like the end of his time over there, and which Arsenal have been. Um, I guess that like, gives him more time and space to uh, pass the ball forwards, they do his thing. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about defending huge spaces, which I guess affected him since Kante has been injured for a while. Uh, I guess it's definitely not as good as Kaiseido, who was who definitely who Arsenal were uh, trying to buy for in the future, uh, probably as a sharper replacement. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think. Uh, Georgina also brings brings for them the know how of uh, of winning uh, winning titles, so that would definitely help uh, help at Arsenal. Like help, uh, you know, in, in the business of the season, they still have like two games against City to win. Uh, if they need someone to like close out those games, Georgina might be the uh, help for them. And also, Arteta's uh, talent ID has been really good. He's been having good, he's been like on a good streak recently. So I'm sure he probably like saw something for like saw some sort of a rule for him. Yeah, well, time will tell if he's a good. It's a strange one. I can see. Uh, I can mm -hmm. see the of adding a body in there. Um, I just don't think. I know Jorginho is good in a high press system. I, I don't think. I don't know if he is, and that's what Arsenal play. 
Um, I'm not sure if he is. I don't know. Maybe maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. I, I don't know. It's just, uh, I do feel sometimes Chelsea fans are a bit too harsh on him. But at the same time, maybe next to Partey. I mean, next to Kante, he's done well. So maybe next to Partey, he'll also be doing mm-hmm. well. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, that, that's another one uh, there. What about Moises Caseros? I mean, a player who's probably thinking that he's going to go to Chelsea. He's thinking he's going to go to Arsenal. Now he's going to have to play at Brighton. He's, he's notoriously told Brighton that he wanted to leave and actually made a plea as well. How how easy or how difficult do you think it's going for him to refocus now and realize that he's going to you know, stay at Biden for the next six months? Um, Kaiser seems a little ill advice, honestly, uh, because I feel like his, his advisors shouldn't really be pinning everything on a move because a player as good as him should have enough confidence in himself to know that he's going to get a better move in the summer tra- summer window when there's even more clubs available. Like right now, it's between Arsenal and Chelsea, but in the summer, come the summer, you might have Man City, uh, you might have like the European heavyweight investor in him. Uh, I think it should be, he should be okay. I think Brighton have dealt with it well. They basically excluded him from everything. Um, I think uh, the, the Zerbi should get a hold on him. Uh, Kaiser is still young. I don't think he's going to create a, a big mess out of it. Uh, he should be, be able to be integrated well. Yeah, I, I think it's a case of being uh, ill advised. I don't think the player went any, uh, meant to cause any of the family in the squad, probably like what he was told to do. Yeah, well, in fact, now in the in, I sort of outside contenders for a top four spot, probably maybe. So they yeah. want him, uh, they definitely want him to be to be back. Um, there. So, but you know, as a United fan, if he's not in the right frame of mind, not, not always a bad thing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for, for United because they need all the help they can get. Um, right, uh, so we'll come to Daniel, of course, later. Pedro Porro as well, uh, moving to sporting, uh, moving to Tottenham from sporting. Um, was, Talked about him to Chelsea. That was a saga. That was a weird one again. Another mad, maddening day where uh, he was done and it was not done, and then it's done. Um, and Jet Spence also moves out. Uh, they do need it. They did need a right back though. As I, Pedro Porro. Do you see him being a game changer for Spurs in the top four? Or uh, I honestly haven't seen much of Pedro Porro. I can't really. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess well, he was uh, wanted, but he is a former City graduate. If I'm not yeah, mistaken, yeah. and he believe he was. I mean, everybody. Chelsea wanted everyone. Was wanted by Chelsea as well. Um, yeah. I, I guess he's he's probably like uh, technically an upgrade on Emerson Royal, who really isn't that good. Um, like when I saw Emerson Royal, I saw a Brazilian right back, so I thought he would be he would have a bit of flair, but he doesn't have that. So I'm guessing uh, reasons first went for that is went for Poirot is for uh, more offense or more like attacking output, uh, which I guess that would that is probably the cornerstone of uh, Conte's system, right? Like he wants to set his uh, his wing back so like basically attacks attack the penalty box. So if Poro is saying that or if even an update on uh, on Emerson on the weekend, then yeah, I guess it boosts uh scores of top four chances. I'm also just looking at uh, at just Fabricio's uh, Twitter had Twitter line just to see because this is the time when deals start getting announced because no yeah. more deals can be done by the way now. So if 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 it, there hasn't been any rumors, nothing's gonna be done now. But uh, this is when teams start announcing deals because the last minute ones that were uh, you know, paperwork and all that. So we just got, of course, we literally got the announcement for a bit a little while ago. That was officially confirmed, of course, that was done. But uh, yeah, just mm-hmm. looking through nothing and nothing at the moment. Um, but we'll see if there's something that pops up. Sports, uh, uh, sorry? Uh, sports also lost uh, Matt Doherty. He went on to a Yeah, uh, he, his contract was terminated. Yes, Matt Doherty contract okay. terminated. Um, so he could join Atletico Madrid. That's another interesting one, Matt Doherty. I, you know, Atletico Madrid is a weird one. It feels like uh, they just, they're not the team that they were. I, I don't know if Matt Doherty really is an upgrade. I think it's just another body to be added. But yeah. uh, I, I don't see him as being an upgrade. So I've got another message there. Um, right. Okay. Um, Awesome. So yeah, so that's Matt Doherty as well out and Hakim Ziyech. Uh, the the heart, maybe the heart, maybe you know, there's all, there's always uh, an Adam Wingy type story, isn't there? Um, is that Adam Wingy of this generation? Um, I, for those who are old enough to remember, Peter Adam Wingy got stuck outside the gates. Of course, we tried to leave us from Hakim Ziyech stranded at PSG's office. I mean, uh, that's a sad one. Is that the player wants to leave? Chelsea wants him to leave, and then all of a sudden he just it just collapsed. Um, that's why, that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you do your homework on time. You do not do it last minute. For that reason, this is why parents tell you do it on time. Um, that we should make a joke of it. But uh, Sahil, what do you think? What, what, what's what's yeah. uh, I mean, opinion on that? He's got to go back to Chelsea. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, that's that's an awkward one. Uh, but I guess because he wasn't like he didn't make a big fuss out of leaving Chelsea. Like all parties were in agreement that he should go. So it was like all cordial. So I guess he'll just go back to his old role on the bench. Not a lot to do over there. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's it's. it's it's a bummer for him, though. 
Yeah, and I, I don't even know how he's going to play it, but because they've signed yeah. Lucky, they've signed Mudrik, they've already got Harvitz, you know, they've got uh, Marcos, mm-hmm. um, so I don't know. Jao Felix, we're Felix, it's yeah. so many know, of them, yeah. Yeah, I don't know Felix, Felix probably doesn't play in his position, and the wingers is, is oh, what okay. we're looking at, but uh, maybe Felix might play as a winger, but I don't, I think he's probably signed to play as a centre forward, but uh, yeah, I mean, he's just going to go back to bench, being a bench player, I guess. Um, I don't think he was going to be a starter at PSG anyway, that he was going to be able yeah. to be a bench player there as well. Um, so yeah, I don't think it matters much, but maybe you thought PSG had a better chance of winning something uh, this season. But uh, yeah, that that that's a sad one for Hakim Zay. Thoughts to, with him? I mean, there's always the option. Chelsea could always terminate his contract. I don't think they'll do it, but they could do that if they really wanted to. But uh, uh, what's what's another few million for for, for Todd Bowles? <laughs> like, spent a hundred, so about three hundred million, four hundred million pounds on on players, and that's just My maybe God. we have to count the cost. By the, by the way, yes, an interesting one. I'm sure the stat has gone around, so we'll say it here as well. Chelsea have more spent more than all the clubs in the Bundesliga, League One, and La Liga combined. Uh, or not, or sorry, I don't know, but I think La Liga, yeah, combined they spent that, but that is just it's, it's incredible numbers to think about it. Um, and uh, yeah, that that's uh, that, that's one more to put up there. And uh, then we got Marcel Sabitzer um, for Manchester United. Now that's a deal that, that you know that Sabitzer is Austrian for panic buy. Maybe I don't know, but but it's a panic buy, isn't it? At the end of the day, they needed a player. They brought him in. Um, what do you think about that signing? For yeah, again, it, it goes back to the lack of planning. You know, we've we've been through this one before. Like you know, you they are reactive instead of proactive. Uh, Mishula should have been the priority, but it's good to have someone of uh, Sabitzer's quality. Uh, I guess he was really good at uh, at uh, RB Leipzig. Hasn't really played much at uh, at Bayern Munich, but that's fine. Uh, uh, I, from what I've read, he's a good passer. He has a good shot. Um, he's from the Red Bull School of Football, so he's has to be a good passer. Uh, he used to be a uh, used to be a right winger before he got uh, converted to a centre midfielder. So uh, probably like has a good cross on him as well. So a lot of good at- attributes. Um, yeah, uh, just hope he stays fit uh, because he didn't have a lot of game time and he's gonna be like he's probably gonna be starting a uh, week in week out unless uh, and I guess plans for Fred on the family either. Yeah, yeah, I think Fred and Casemiro will probably be the first choice midfield going forward. McDonald is injured, by the way, as well. Yeah. Uh, right, but I think I think the Sabitzer will probably be the bench option, and then if you know if if Sabitzer starts playing well, Fred drops, then they'll probably switch. But uh, I think I think initially at least Fred and Casemiro will be the two guys. Um, so I actually remember playing with Sabitzer when when RB Leipzig were in League Two. I played on FIFA and I played Sabitzer. Sabitzer was a striker back then, and then I saw him become a, an attacking midfielder, then he becomes a CDF, so he keeps going back and back and back, yeah. so very, very uh, interesting story there, but yeah, Sabitzer, um, good player, I think, um, for, uh, uh, for 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 Leipzig, of course, uh, sorry, yeah, he was a good player for Leipzig, and he probably is yeah. a good signing for Manchester United as well, I mean, that's about the best that he could hope for at this point, because we know Glazers are not going to spend any money right now, um, are you happy with Manchester United's overall transfer business, do you think they could have done a bit more, maybe another signing in Atlanta, or is that being too greedy? Uh, Striker, I mean, like someone said, if uh, if like the previous, if any of the previous managers had had bought boots like us, uh, I think we would all be up and down. So because then I just wanted him, we are not really uh, like we are kind of believing believing in him. But uh, like the uh, Vegas doesn't seem like United quality, at least like from the previous record. But obviously, I I hope I hope I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I haven't really watched him, but just like him in his career path so far. Um, I think. I was hoping we would go for a right back, uh, but I guess Van is at so I think well, so maybe that's not that much of a priority position. But yeah, I was hoping for a proper midfielder. Uh, I hope Sabin Sabin said that. That was the main uh, pain area. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the midfield was reverse the midfielder that was needed. There's no. There's no number 10, though. That, that's something that will be one to watch out for as well what happens. But uh, we shall see. Um, a couple of uh, other questions. I think this is probably more, most of the top deals that we've covered here that we've talked about. Um, and thank you for your thoughts on that. But are you surprised Liverpool didn't make uh, any transfers in the deadline day? I mean, there was talk of they, they probably need bodies in midfield. They've not signed a midfielder at all. Um, and the only play, I think they signed Gakpo. And that was the only player that they've signed. Are you surprised that they didn't do anything on deadline day? They, I mean, especially after the way that they lost to Brighton. Were you surprised? Do you think that's just the way that they're going to operate? Is, is they're going to look at summer? No, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think a midfielder would have helped a lot. Like they're, they're really crying out for some, some someone in there. I think the starting midfielder, uh, the the new guy from from the academy. I'm not sure if he's good enough, but just the fact that he's, uh, I'm not sure how good he is. I, I he might be good enough, but just the fact that he's starting shows a lot. Uh, tells a lot about the issues uh, they have right now. Uh, I guess Arthur. I don't know if Klopp's, uh, Klopp's backing on Arthur to come back and play, but uh, I guess he's almost forgotten now. I don't even know. Like, if yeah, Arthur, is like big, Arthur is like Bigfoot. It's not like aliens. You, you know they exist. You've never seen them. So you don't know if they yeah. actually exist, but they actually do exist, right? It's like Bigfoot. 
Yeah, it's a it's a weird one. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess uh, they really stick to their philosophy a lot. Um, I guess which makes them a little inflexible. They should be. I mean, rigid, not inflexible. Uh, they should be like trying to see, like trying to fix those small holes uh, in in their squad sometimes. Uh, yeah, definitely, especially in a situation as bad as this one. Yeah, yeah, and I just wonder if Liverpool have kind of said this season is a write off for us now, and we're just going to focus on um, getting through the end of the season, and then we'll look at next season what to bring. I, I don't know. I mean, there's also talk of a you know a partial sale, potential sale. There's all sorts yeah. of things. We know that. Um, so maybe that there's there's considerations there. But it's weird to see Liverpool not uh, not active at all, particularly when mm-hmm. they're not in such a good run of form. Um, right, and and let's we'll talk about Chelsea. Let's talk about all the money that they have spent. So I, what, what do you make of it? Do you think it's a it's a good thing? It's a bad thing? What what? How do you see the whole spending? Uh, not just in dead nine day, but overall. What, what do you think? What are your thoughts about that? Uh, it seemed a little um, I don't know. Like when inside Madrid, I thought they were uh, spending all the Enzo money on Madrid, so it didn't seem very coherent at that at that point. But then this. Ended up signing Enzo as well, so I'm guessing they just had a lot of money to burn, and they decided to go for whoever was in, in, in the market. Um, it's a little it's a little weird to spend so much money in January because you would have more options. Uh, in um in in the, in the summer window, um, you have more time to negotiate more. Like you know, you don't have to like go for only players who are available. Uh, I think they definitely overspent on players whose teams could have done with uh, lesser money. Uh, definitely uh, Madrid, uh, who's playing who was playing with Shakhtar. Um, Shakhtar, how you know, as 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 it is, um, they were probably looking for uh, money because they haven't really played. Like you know, the the whole system is probably shattered. So, uh, paying eighty million to them, I mean, good for them, but good for Shakhtar, but seems a little excessive. Uh, so a place like uh, Maduweke, didn't know if there was a need for someone like Maduweke. I guess the squad seems really really bloated right now, so they need to make uh, outgoings. But the thing is that. Um, I would, I thought they would buy more than one midfielder because that seems the uh, problem area right now. Uh, I they are really banking on Enzo to fix things for them because uh, players like uh, I guess Cobbins is still good, but like Jorginho uh, is out, Kante injured, uh, Gallagher and Ruben Loftus Cheek probably not good enough. So yeah, uh, I think uh, the signings are good, but they might still not fix the issues if Enzo doesn't work out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they do play with the three four three usually, usually. Uh, yeah. So they play a three-four-three. Then you're kind of expecting two midfielders. So maybe one is is enough now. But uh, I mean, don't rule it out. This summer they might go back for Caicedo. Um, you know that, that's that's something that might happen as well. We don't know. But speaking of the Jan, you know, summer transfer window. And this is an interesting point that we brought up, which was actually going to be my last question for you today. Um, the January transfer window. We talk about the summer transfer window being the main one. Is that changing? Because we saw last year as well. Louis, there were quite a few big deals. Louis Diaz, for example, went last year. Um, you know, there were some big deals last year as well. This year again, there's some big deals happening. Um, is it is it changing? I mean, it, it, are things slowly changing? That people are starting to look at the January transfer window not just as a way to uh, you know plug gaps, but actually looking at, actually as part of their planning and thinking, yeah, we can sign big players and do big deals in January as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's definitely a shift. But I think it's that is completely driven by the Premier League. The other leagues, like you mentioned before, uh, have not spent that much. Uh, I guess. Even if you take out Chelsea's uh, sp- sp- uh, expenditure, it doesn't look that bad. But with many of Chelsea's uh, money spent, it looks a little uh, like obviously it, it like uh, bloats the uh, spending a lot. But uh, I feel like if clubs are spending so much money in January, they would that would mean that there's even more money to be spent in uh, spent in the summer because it just means that uh, the buying capacity of Premier League clubs has gone up. Either that or Maybe Chelsea want to avoid all the competition they can and snap all, snap up all the players as soon as possible to make a push for the top four. But I think this is an anomaly. This this one in particular is an is an anomaly. It should not be repeated again. It doesn't seem like this no. doesn't seem very smart business for the buy or the selling. Yeah, I actually disagree. I think it's actually smart business because when you think about it, when you say some of this lots of time for clubs to make signings, a lot of clubs do budget for the summer. So why don't you sign players that you want to sign the summer in January? You know, you get ahead of everybody else. Nobody else has the money. Uh, so to speak, so you go ahead and you, and you buy the players that you want. Sure, it's inflated values, but mm-hmm. if they have a good six months, then their value is going to go up anyway. So you might as well buy a player, you know, before and avoid all the complications. That, that's what I feel. Uh, obviously, you know, yeah. people have different opinions, right? And uh, yeah, I, you know, let me know in the comments what you think, of course. But yeah, uh, no, that's fair though. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, your opinion could be different from mine, right? Yeah. We all, I mean, would I have signed Enzo Fernandez for 150 million pounds if I had the money? 
Um, I probably would. I would. But I said, would you pay the five million pounds? Probably not. I wouldn't. Probably not, yeah. It's it's it because for me, Enzo Fernandez is a player you sign, and you know if if he if he does if he continues on the trajectory that he's on, you, that that money is not is gonna look like jump change. Yeah. Once sure. once your, your team, right? Um, and if you've paid eighty million for Chuamini, you pay sixty for Casemiro, then one hundred fifteen doesn't really seem that excessive. Anyway. But uh, yeah. You know, these are things, right? These are all different opinions, and we all go with that. But but I do feel that there, there's something to be said. Actually, there's one thing that I did forget for to talk about that Jacques Cancelo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are talking about it. It's actually quite a bit old because it actually came out last yesterday and not today, technically, although the deal was done today. Uh, how surprised are you? Salah was very surprised to hear that he's leaving because I know he's not at a good time, but he still seemed like a crucial player. Um, surely something, I mean, I know something's happened, we know something's happened, but it must be really big for him to say, I'm just going to go. Yeah, for sure. I guess that also shows how ruthless Pep is. I think he's not willing to take uh, anything from anyone. I guess uh, even like some disagreements and he was like, just like, you know, it's best to ship him out of there. That to a player as well as Cancelo, as someone who was recently as important as Cancelo. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty shocking, but uh, yeah, uh, must, have, must have been pretty bad, whatever happened. Yeah. And, like and a lot of disagreements. Yeah, I do feel that somewhere I think Cancelo is kind of maybe maybe Pep has he had a chance to ask Pep, well, am I going to be you know is this a temporary benching or is it something that's going to come? And I think he's probably yeah. saying, uh, no, unless like, you're not going to get a chance for a while. And so yeah. Cancelo thought, yeah, you know, I don't want to be a player who's going to be fighting, you know, on the bench, whatever. Some players don't mind it, some players do, um, you know. So that that maybe happens. maybe the fact that um, an 18 year old and Rico Lewis is basically doing what Cancelo normally does, but from the other side might have even uh, achieved him a little more. Yeah, or maybe the fact that uh, a centre back is playing left back over him. Yeah, and that's sure. also another thing, right? Sometimes yeah. it's ego to steal players have egos as well. So yeah, it could be both, right? Could be the fact that an 18 year old and a centre back have taken his spots. I've taken one of his two spots, and yeah, he's probably thinking, well, what, what does that mean for him? So, yeah, um, but City, they have, they have been one of the five players waiting to take over. So, I don't think that they'll be okay. A lot of people are talking about depth. They've, they've still got Sergi Gomez, they've still got uh, Kyle Walker in the side. I don't think they're going to have that many problems to worry yeah. about. <laughs> with, with, if there's one team that doesn't need to worry about depth, it's it's Manchester City. <laughs> I mean, anybody else can worry about it. Manchester City don't have to worry about it. Um, anyway, well, that was our deadline day review. I mean, we've done most of it. Just, uh, there's a lots of deals. Dead Spence going uh, to, to uh, you know, leaving Tottenham was another uh, deal that's happened. As you know, the Bournemouth have signed a few players as well. Yeah. Uh, Leeds have signed uh, a few as well. So, so one ahead. more. Uh, Kayla Navas can move to Nottingham Forest. Uh, yes, Kayla Navas. Uh, you know what? You think, uh, glad you brought it up. I'm glad that it happened today and not a week before because it means he won't play tomorrow. So that's very important because um, that game, oh my God, that's, that's such a crucial game now. But yeah, if you play tomorrow, there'll be a problem because uh, I, cause I, have, I have faith in Hennessy not being good enough, but I know Kilo Navas is good. Too bad, uh, you know, and, and I think that's something to be talked about though, isn't it? Now, the teams that have already played Nottingham Forest don't have to deal with Kilo Navas's goals yeah. keeping. Um, whereas uh, perhaps, uh, um, you know, a team like, like uh, you know, those who have not played them will have to think about the same with Chelsea. I mean, some teams have already played Chelsea twice and they won't have to worry about dealing with Enzo and and um, you know these guys, uh, Madrid and all these guys, but those. So maybe there's something there to be looked at as well. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, maybe, maybe there's a plan there. But we'll, we'll see what happens. By the way, what does this mean for Dean Henderson? Though, Sahil? I mean, it's an interesting point that you brought up for Kilo Navas. I'm sorry, I'm keeping her a little bit here. But Kilo Navas coming in, what does that mean for Dean Henderson? Because surely um, Henderson is, you know, Navas is good enough to bench Henderson, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't expect Dean Henderson to start ahead of uh, Kilo Navas. Uh, I think I just like one more stop. Uh, like one more stall period in uh, Henderson's development. He's not had a good time ever since he uh, got back from Sheffield United. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how he's performed this season. Uh, he's actually been pretty season. good. I mean, he's he's been... I don't think he's been... I mean, he, he's shown why he's not a Manchester United goalkeeper. Like, he's very good at shot-stopping. He's, he's got that, you know, ability. But I, I just don't think he has the composure to be a top-level uh, goalkeeper. That's what my opinion is. Of course, from what little I've seen him, I know he's, he's, he's done that. So... Um, I mean, Kayla Navas coming in, surely, uh, you know, both of them are lone goalkeepers. So at the end of the day, it's not like one is permanent yeah. and the other is not. Um, but it's just it's just interesting that, they, and I know Dean Henderson is going to be injured for a while. That's why they've gone and brought Kayla okay. Navas. That's, that's yeah. the reason. Okay. The reason why they brought Kayla Navas is because Dean Henderson is injured. But uh, the fact is that uh, if Kayla Navas plays well, and the time that Dean Henderson is injured, surely Dean Henderson is not walking back and taking his place because of it. For sure. So yeah. That's you know, an international goalkeeper. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Like a promoted club is signing a four-time Champions League winner versus five times. Well, to be fair, I mean, Kayla Navas is... A, it, it's, it, it, there's a debate there as well for PSG fans. Well, is Kayla Navas a better goalkeeper than Donnarumma? A lot of people feel that. Yeah. Is. 
Um, I feel that he is too. I think I think Donnarumma didn't deserve that golden ball that he got at the World Cup. I don't know why he got it, but he got it. Um, I don't think I don't think I think I think that was just like one of those things that they do. But I do feel that uh, Navas is the most stable goalkeeper. That Donnarumma, but Donnarumma is the bigger name, so they do, they start him. Um, but I mean, PSG again have so many. I think they have what, at one point eleven goalkeepers in their in their squad or whatever. So they they they're, they're goalkeepers as well. So weird. That's such such things. I think about. Anyway, thank you so much, Sahil, for joining me today on the show. It's, it's been a wonderful uh, discussion that we've had. And great to get your opinions on all these big deals. Uh, people are watching. Let us in the comments. I mean, there are deals. I'm sure there are deals that we've missed. Um, so if there's something that you know you want to talk about. Let us in the comments. Of course, we'd be happy to hear from from you guys. And um, let's see. I mean, they've got a big game tomorrow uh, in the Carabao Cup semi-final. By the way, congratulations to Newcastle for making it to the final. Um, and uh, of course, then because uh, it's got a big weekend again of football as well coming up. So there's lots of games, and we'll be back. Um, but yeah, let's see how the season progresses with all these new signings. It'll be like almost a whole new teams in some cases. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Chelsea's first team will look like on 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 the weekend. What who they will play and who starts. It'll be wonderful to see. But thank you so much, Sahil. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for. Yeah, and if you did enjoy this video, do smash a like uh, and uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. We're close to 200 subscribers on YouTube, so please help us reach that landmark. Uh, by subscribing. Sahil has already subscribed and he came here speci specifically to, to encourage all of you to sign up. Uh, <laughs> please do. Uh, but thank you for watching. Take care. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.